One of the main goals in physical security is to detect the presence of humans or maybe animals within a facility to uh, detect possible intrusion. And some of the ways we do that are with cameras, with motion sensors. There's different techniques that we can use to do this. Uh, cameras are used to detect. They're also used to deter attacks. Uh, cameras can be placed in very visible locations. It's important to have cameras visible to show potential intruders that you are focusing on security or investing in security. Cameras uh, are used to detect intrusion, detect people coming and going. They can be used from a health and human safety standpoint to detect individuals entering and leaving the facility personnel. Uh, maybe in the event of an evacuation, you would have cameras that would detect individuals leaving a facility and identifying those, those individuals through gate analysis. Uh, gate analysis being the analysis of how someone walks, the biometric characteristic, you know, the cadence of their walk and the uh, way in which that person walks that can be detected and identified with a camera. It's important to understand the laws in your area, in your country, in your state, regarding camera use. Many areas in the United States prohibit the use of cameras with audio recording devices. And a company can get in a lot of trouble. They can face uh, legal, legal consequences if they are recording individuals without their consent. So that's why a lot of closed circuit television or CCT cameras or surveillance cameras do not have an audio recording feature. Cameras should also not be placed in areas where privacy is a concern. You don't want to have a camera in your bathroom. Uh, and it's important to understand these laws when placing these cameras either within the workplace or outside externally on your building. You could be, uh, if even if it's a, a storage facility where you don't have anybody working, you, know, you may be sued by somebody who is uh, claiming that you're on, you're inappropriately recording them or recording audio without their consent. Uh, that could be very important. Now this term closed circuit television or CCTV is an older term that used to mean literally a closed circuit uh, that the cameras would only be available through a closed network that was not connected to anything else and they would be fed to a television. If you're looking at older movies like Die Hard or any type of old cop movie, you'd see a security guard watching a television. That'd be a traditional CCTV. The term is still used today, even though modern, modern cameras, modern surveillance systems are often fed and connected to the internet. Maybe they're fed into a security operations center like you see here, or they're centrally monitored or even monitored by a third party. A lot of organizations will hire a security company to monitor their cameras for them. Uh, this can be helpful to provide real-time de detection and allow some sort of response or corrective response in the event that an intruder is detected. Uh, now you can supplement cameras with guards. Uh, cameras can be used in conjunction with guards and oftentimes that's where they can be most effective. It's important to place your cameras uh, in certain locations. And cameras can be placed in a way to ensure that you're covering all areas. So if we have, imagine this is an external building and we're looking at a top-down view. Where we wanna place our cameras, there's a couple of different strategies. One strategy would be the uh, corner approach where we place a camera at each corner of the building. And that camera would look down the corner of the building. So the camera is basically looked down this way. And we place one at each of these four corners and the idea here is that we don't have any blind spots with our camera placement. So we get to see every all the areas in green here. And that four corner placement can be quite helpful. Now in an internal space, it can be helpful to place cameras back to back, where basically you have two cameras and one looks in this direction and then we have camera B here that looks in this direction. The idea here is that you're covering any blind spot. So if you, next time you go into a building or a bank, take a look at the cameras, 
just pay attention. Don't look too hard. Don't be suspicious, but just make note of the cameras and see how they're, how the layout is and uh, take note of how those camera placements are. Also, if you have a corner, you'd want to place the camera in the corner to look throughout the corner itself. And that's the idea there to get that right camera placement. Also, you would want to place cameras at entrances. So if we have an entrance here, we'd want to have a camera. We'd probably have it here to look down this corner to also see the entrance. And then we may have an internal camera uh, to also see that entrance too. This one, pretty simple in a long room like this. Maybe we have two cameras, one at each corner like that. So different camera placement strategies to consider. And there's, uh, if you ever have any questions, there's a lot of security companies out there that can definitely help you. Anybody who you're buying the cameras from can also help you as well. Um, but yeah, cameras are a very effective tool. Cameras also have different optical modes. There's a standard vision note mode that would pick up visible light just like we're seeing it. There's also a thermal type of camera, infrared and night vision cameras. Okay. Thermal cameras use a sensor called uh, bolometer to pick up heat generated by humans, usually uh, buildings or reflected heat or even engines. And the uh, bolometer would then display that, that and capture that heat and allow it to be displayed. Infrared cameras use a different type of sensor called a focal plane array or FPA. And they'll convert that heat that's generated into a digital signal. Sometimes the infrared cameras will be uh, black and white with white being hot black being cold. Sometimes it'll be color. This is a forward looking infrared uh, FLIR image and shows the uh, heat in orange and reds and the cold in blues and purples. And then night vision converts photons into electrons using a photocathode. Then it amplifies, amplifies this electron signal to make a visual image or basically to amplify the captured photon. So night vision requires some sort of light to operate, but it can operate at very, very low light. So it's ideal for outdoor uh, camera use, not for pitch black use. Uh, and, and this is like traditional, if you look at a, uh, there's different types of night vision, but if you're ever familiar with maybe older uh, military videos where there's green footage, that's night vision. And there's more modern night vision applications as well. So it's important to pick the right optical mode if you're surveilling outside of your uh, building to have the correct optical mode if you suspect or need to have surveillance at night in a poorly lit area. Of course, you can supplement this. You can have lighting and then use a regular camera. But if your lights go out, then you probably won't be able to record anything. So it can be useful to have other optical modes. Now, drones are very excellent at surveilling large facilities. They're also a really good deterrent. If a potential intruder sees that drones are patrolling the area, it shows that there's an active focus on security. Drones are used in data centers, modern data centers that have large sprawling facilities. And it may be, while it's useful to have uh, surveillance cameras as well, there may be areas on top of these buildings that could be useful to survey or areas around the perimeter that may be helpful to have a drone uh, take a look at every once in a while. The drones can also be useful to examine examine equipment, examine like HVAC equipment or examine the tops of buildings that may be difficult to get to, maybe to examine like storm damage or just to do a patrol. Uh, there are also they're pretty, the, the technology is much more advanced now with drones, so it could be much cheaper to get drones than it once was and to use them on a regular basis. Of course, with drones, you do need somebody who is drone certified, has a drone license to operate the drone, but those are fairly easy to get uh, in today's time. So drones can be very helpful and they are used quite frequently, especially if a company owns a larger space. Now, motion sensors are fantastic to cover a location, usually inside or an area where there's very little foliage. Uh, you don't want to put this out 
near like a tree that's going to be waving or uh, an area where you might expect some wildlife. Um, but motion sensors are great for restricted areas, for example. You might want to have a motion sensor in uh, the area where you store your data or like a, a vault where you store equipment. So a motion sensor can be helpful to alert whenever there is a presence moving into the zone of the sensor. And this could be linked up to an alarm or to guards to notify those guards that something is entering that space. It could also be combined with cameras. So you can have a camera set to only record once the motion sensor is triggered. And that can be very helpful as well, especially if you're recording areas of your facility. Say you have a large corporate campus, for example, areas that have uh, wide open spaces. You may not need to record and take up data and recording time all the time looking at those spaces, but you might only want to start recording if something of note is happening. So motion sensors use two main technologies. There's microwave based motion sensors and there's ultrasonic. And it really just depends on the types of waves that they produce. Both types of sensors work by bouncing the waves off of surfaces and then retrieving those waves. Uh, so kind of like if you look at this cute little bat here, it's like uh, ultrasonic. So it's pretty much very similar to how ultrasonic works with uh, bats and dolphins and things, kind of echolocation. Uh, very similar to how a motion sensor would work with a microwave or an ultrasonic motion sensor. Bounce waves off of a field or its location and retrieve those back. If there's any disruption in that field, like somebody walking into the area, then the motion sensor would be triggered. So microwave or ultrasonic motion sensors are usually the main types. You also have infrared sensors that will change or detect changes in temperature. And these work through infrared imaging, like infrared cameras. So if there's a human walking into a space, they can be really helpful. These aren't really good at detecting robots. Robots get a pass when it comes to infrared sensors, but they're very, they're very helpful. They can be also set to alert guards, set to alert other, uh, or set to create alarms. So infrared sensor is another type of sensor that can be very helpful, all heat-based while the, the other types of motion sensors were using those waves to bounce off of different objects in an area.